All right. So we should report it. Yeah. All right. We'll give time to people to come in. Everything in life is a negotiation. Are you hearing something in the background? Yeah, that's my Facebook, so I'm killing it now. Okay. Much better. All right. Okay, okay. I right, got a few people on. All right, cool. Good thing. All right, just bear with us just a few moments here. Try to give time a little time for people to come in. I don't own the rights to the music, so uh, <laughs> please don't try to come after me for that. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get started, I guess. We'll we'll start and we'll work no on the way out. No problem. Remember when you are, take your time. All right. So uh good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um thanks for joining today. We're going to uh talk today about uh how to protect your assets and how to uh accumulate wealth with different strategies. And here uh we have our dear dear friend and brother uh kevin span who is a who is um the owner operator of ak span agency uh yes let me introduce myself which i didn't do i'm clarence cunny i'm a licensed real estate agent in new york state um you can follow us on um uh, on twitter we have all the things there twitter instagram uh, so my deal is i help you get into real estate I help you move real estate, so either buying, selling, whatever it may be, and we'll do it the best way possible for you and your family. So I'm going to throw it over to Kevin here. We're gonna, he's going to talk to us about what he he does and uh, what he can do to help us accumulate and protect our wealth. Kevin, excellent, Clarice. Thank you for the uh, introduction. My name is Abraham Kevin Span, the founder, principal, president of Abraham Kevin Span and Sons Insurance Agency. Allstate Insurance Agency based in Queens, service at all of downstate New York, all five boroughs, Long Island, Westchester County, and all the lower counties. Um, what I do is Clarence sells the American dream. I help you protect that American dream. My job is very, very simple. Um, I help people protect what they work very hard to buy. That's your home and that's your cars and your toys if you're into boats and motorcycles. And then my job is to also help you prepare for the uncertainties of the future with life insurance and proper retirement planning um, to create a legacy for yourself and to build wealth for you, your family, and future generations. Very good. Very good. So can you tell us about so the mechanics of how you actually, you know, um, what you actually do with that in terms of how you protect us, how are you you know, set us up for the future? Sure, absolutely. Each person is different. Each person's at a different station in life. So the first part of my job is fact-finding, talking to you, finding out who you are, what you do, 
where you are in your financial journey and making sure I build a package and a program that's ideally suited just for you. And that's my phone ringing in the background. We'll take that away and hopefully take that sound out in the future. So that's my job. Uh, Clarence, it's personal service. It's one person at a time. It's not a one package fit all approach, but it's meeting people where they are and taking them where they want to go. Very good. Okay, so I guess we'll talk about, um, we're going to talk about, uh, you want to talk about life insurance here? Or you want to talk about more of the, of the home insurance and protections and what that actually entails? So what do you actually, what, what's covered when I get home insurance? What, what's actually covered? Okay, that's a good place to start. Let's start with the home insurance. If you're being a, a realtor, I'll tell you what is covered, and then I'll tell you what most people don't tell you. I'll tell you what's not covered, and that's an important question to ask. You should always ask whenever you buy any type of insurance policy, not only the price and what is covered, but any good insurance professional should be able to quickly and easily tell you what's not covered. When you buy a home, there are about five key coverages that are included in the home insurance policy. Dwelling coverage, which is an insurance word, just meaning the frame, the structure of the house, so that's your dwelling. Uh, any other structures, if you have a separate garage or shed, that's automatically covered for 10% of the amount of the dwelling. Your personal property, which is everything that you have inside of your dwelling. So if you can picture a dollhouse that you can pick up and turn upside down, everything that falls out of that is your personal property. That includes your furniture, your appliances, your electronics, your clothing, your shoes, things of that nature. So we've said uh, dwelling coverages, other structure coverages, personal property coverage that's usually set in a formula about 70% of the, the dwelling. The next coverage that comes into play is referred to as additional living expense or loss of use coverage. Very important coverage. I'll come back to that and define it in a second. And then the final most important uh, key five coverage that's included in home insurance is family liability protection. And that's insurance to protect this valuable asset that you've just purchased. Um, if you're purchasing a home anywhere in the downstate New York area, on the low end, you're starting at about 300,000 and it just continues to go upward from there. That being said, once you become a homeowner, you also become a target because if you do anything wrong, where you get sued, you have a valuable asset to lose, not only to strangers, but also to family and friends that may come by your house in the future when we can um, socialize and connect and network with each other once again. You can be sued. It's not limited to what happens on the property. It follows you and your family um, if you're sued for anything personally, not professionally, personally. Um, the four coverage that I glossed over that I said I would come back and define is additional living expenses or loss of use. Um, I often tell people when I speak publicly about this that this is the single most important coverage because this is the coverage that comes into play when you're at your lowest point. If a family suffers a total loss, a devastating loss, like a fire, something I've been through with many of my clients, this is the coverage that will pay to put you and your family in a hotel, in a comparable house or an apartment until your home is safe to live in again. Um, and Clarence, these coverages for the most part basically apply to renters insurance and co-op and condo insurance as well, with the exception of the uh, dwelling coverage. Okay. So can I ask so, you a quick question about that? Sure. Because I've seen, I've had a friend um, locally, uh, she experienced a fire where she couldn't really live in her home. So they gave her a, like a, a trailer. Um, so what's the difference between getting a trailer versus getting a hotel? Is that coverage? Is that coverages or what's up? The with difference that? is having, having insurance with the right company and the right agent that's going to fight for you to get you the right things. Whenever I see a trailer in front of someone's house, that's a bad sign. That's a bad sign because no one in our area, for the most part, we do have a few trailer parks, nothing wrong with trailer parks, but no one that lives in a house plans on being in a trailer. Uh, you want to be in comparable living situations. So that's not comparable. That's uh, drastically different. Gotcha. All right. Please continue. I just I've been choosing a trailer for a year 
and it was a disaster. <laughs> so. Yeah, I can imagine. A couple of things went wrong. First thing that went wrong was that uh, she was with the wrong company. Secondly, um, they may not have had the right amount of loss of use coverage, so they extended that as far as possible. Um, it also goes into a lot of people, um, a lot of companies have become wealthy by advertising. You say 15% in 15 minutes. Well, that may be true, but there's also an old action that we can't get, which is that you get what you pay for. Um, so anyone that lives in New York, uh, we know it's expensive to live here. Everything you buy from your home to your auto is expensive. Um, I don't believe that people should take shortcuts with their insurance because it feels good up front to save money in your pocket, but it feels awful on the back end. God forbid if you have a loss and you have to live without some of the comforts that you're used to in life. Just look at the situation we're in now where we're all sheltering in place here in New York and you're really dependent on everything you have in your home. It becomes more important. Okay. So Clarence, I talked about the five key things that are in every home insurance policy with every company. Um, there are two things that are not included in your home insurance. Very important that you know what those two things are. Um, the first thing is that no standard home insurance policy includes flood insurance. Okay, flood insurance, if you're buying a policy and you're in a flood zone or you're near the water, um, in some cases it's going to be mandated. In other cases, it's wise to purchase. If you're inland or far away from the water, it's not necessary, but it's important for you to know and not to assume that flood insurance is automatically included in your home insurance policy because it's not. The second thing that's not automatically included in your home insurance is mortgage protection insurance. Home insurance does not come with any provision to pay off the mortgage. God forbid if you or if you've purchased a home with loved ones or a partner or with anyone else, if you become disabled or if um, you pass away, there's no automatic provision in your home insurance policy that would pay off your mortgage. So that kind of helps us bridge into the life insurance conversation. And one of the places that people want to start to make sure um, when you have a mortgage that you're in a conversation with the life insurance professional about purchasing life insurance to pay off your mortgage. Gotcha. Uh, and before we get further into life insurance, I know when I worked with the people at your office, uh, we always have the conversation with clients, say, hey, you need to bump up your car insurance as well. Because God forbid you did a car accident and something happens and you're at the state minimum, uh, that might not be the best thing with having a nice brand new spanky, uh, <laughs> spanky new asset. So how do we protect ourselves there in our cars? With our Absolutely. So one of the things that separates um, my agency from other carriers we take all of our clients through a tool called the risk assessment calculator. Um, again, the easiest thing in the world to do is to give someone a cheap price. The right thing to do is to talk to each person like an individual and assess what you have to lose. God forbid you're in a car accident and you injure someone, how much would that person sue you for and what could they take away? New York state minimums, as you correctly mentioned, it only requires us to carry 25,000, 50,000, 10,000. Kevin, what does that mean? That means you have to carry enough insurance to pay $25,000 to, $25, to any individual that you injure or $50,000 to everybody in the car. And it also means that you have to carry $10,000 worth of property damage to pay for any other vehicle that you damage or any other property. If you drive your car into a house or a storefront, it's the same $10,000. The obvious question that you ask is, who would be satisfied with that amount of money? The name of the show is who wants to be a millionaire, not who wants to be a 25,000-air. So that's where we advise people, specifically our new homeowners, if you're transitioning going from being a renter to a homeowner, definitely we will engage in a conversation about upping the liability limits on your car insurance because we don't want to expose the home. Um, we take the time, we have a longer conversation, longer than 15 minutes, because in most cases, the purchase of your home will be the largest asset that anyone um, actually purchases in their life. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I guess also another couple of questions I had were, uh, 
so, so let's say we get a really severe rainstorm and it causes flooding from your sewer. Would that general homeowner's insurance cover that or would that be another type of insurance? Uh, the answer is no, great question. That's another coverage called water backup coverage. So, and that applies specifically if we get the rains that we anticipate to receive today. Um, the reports on the news today that we're gonna get one to two inches of rain in our area. The New York City sewer system is only equipped to hit, excuse me, to handle one inch of rain per hour. When that second inch of rain comes down, the water will not have any place to go. It won't just sit on the surface and form a puddle in front of your house or your apartment. Water does what it wants to do when it wants to do it. So it will then go backwards into your house through your commode or through your tub and it will uh, flood your basement or your man cave. That's when you want to have water backup coverage. That's an individual um, coverage that we engage people in a conversation to find out if you have a basement, if you have a man cave, is your basement finished? And has there ever been any water issues there before? Water is the number one problem with all insurance policies. Uh, home insurance, residence insurance, co-op insurance, condo insurance, it's our most common claim. And more often than that, on average, water does about $5,000 worth of damage anytime it enters your house, any way that it comes in. Oh, wow. That's pretty big. So you definitely want to be covered there. Uh, and then also, I know it's a difference when you have rains coming down and you say you suffered some damage to your roof because of the rains, heavy rain. So that would be covered the general policy? Or? Absolutely. Rain is a covered peril. Wind, thunder, hail. Um, everything, uh, people are out there questioning about what is covered and what's not covered. The simplest way that I like to answer that is everything that is sudden and accidental is covered everything that's maintenance is not covered. So for example, Clarence, I had my roof replaced on my house last year. I've been living in my home for 20 years. A roof is only supposed to last for 20 years, okay? So we noticed, we started noticing early last year when it rained, we noticed uh, water spots uh, near the ceiling in our dining room. That's an indication of a maintenance problem. That means that some of the tiles on my roof, they were getting ready to go. So before that happens, you want to take the next step and replace your roof because insurance is not a warranty. Insurance does not guarantee how long your, your roof will last. It doesn't guarantee how long your boiler will last. Insurance is there to pay for things that are sudden and accidental. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, and then uh, the last question like this, but if you have like a, let's say it's a hurricane happening, we're not on the water, but we're close to the water, right? So, and you get damaged to your home because of the hurricane or the elevated winds, is that covered or is that another type of insurance I need to add on to my home? No, that's covered. So in the case of a hurricane, um, everything in insurance is about what is the cause of the loss. So in the case of a hurricane, if the cause of the loss to your property is the when it is covered. So one thing you may be thinking is uh, you've referred a number of clients to us for home insurance. Um, there's two deductibles on your policy. There's your all peril deductible, all peril, P-E-R-I-L deductible, which is what you'll pay for most causes of loss, fire, water, wind, hail, damage. Um, and that's usually about $1,000 is pretty standard, a little bit more for people that want to save more money. And then you'll also have something called your hurricane deductible, which is 5% of your dwelling coverage. So if you have a $500,000 house, 5% of that would be about $25,000. That would be your hurricane deductible. When does the hurricane deductible come into play? When winds are at a certain amount of miles per hour. They differ by policy. Usually you're in the 75 mile per hour to 100 mile per hour range. And that's not a decision that's made by all state, state farm travels or any insurance company. It's a decision that's made by the federal government that says, yes, this was a hurricane and you can evoke the hurricane deductible or no, the winds were not at that level and you can't. So the worst storm that we had in our area that everyone will still be familiar with, it's not too far removed, was Hurricane Sandy, October 29th, 2012. And with as much damage that was done by Hurricane Sandy, knocked out all the power. I personally didn't have it for eight days. Some people were worse off. 
Uh, we couldn't get gas in our area at all. Even Hurricane Sandy was not determined to be a hurricane. So every claim had to be paid at the regular deductible. Yeah, you're surprised. Not determined. The winds were not, when the winds hit New York, they were not fast enough. It was anticipated and projected to be much worse. Um, this was the once a hundred year storm that we and several other companies were worried about that we foresaw coming. Um, but it did not, once it got to New York, it wasn't as bad as it was when it hit the coastal areas coming up from the south to the north. Wow, that's interesting. It wasn't the start of the hurricane. Mm -hmm. I know it's nor'easter or hurricane and something else at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's like, you got whacked pretty good. I was out of power for about nine days. So I was there. For <laughs> yep, I had, I had the same thing. And uh, it's funny to think about what we're going through now. And the only comparison that's not equal at all is thinking back to the gas lines of 2012, where you really had to measure your gas and can I drive and should I drive because I may not be able to get any more. So not, a, not even a close comparison to what we're dealing with. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so let's shift into the life insurance piece of it. So we, we talked about having enough life insurance to cover your mortgage and so just in case something happened to you or you had some kind of, is it just death or is it a catastrophic event? So let's say you got into an accident, you lost your limbs, so you no longer can work. Um, so does it cover me there or is that another type of insurance? It's, it's a couple of types of things. So I'll talk about life insurance first. But catastrophic events that falls into other types of policies that we do sell, accident insurance, disability insurance, both of which are more likely to happen than death. Um, but a number of people, you're more likely to struggle to pay your mortgage because of a disability more than anything else. Uh, a disability that uh, prohibits you from being able to work and earn your normal standard of living doing whatever it is that you, that you do. Um, Life insurance, interesting question that you asked. So a lot of times people think of life insurance just as a burial policy. Just, you know, Kevin, I have a $10,000 policy. I have enough to bury me. That's all I need. Well, in some cases, that's okay. If you're older and you don't have any debt, anyone that depends on your income, that may be enough. But if you have debt, if you have a mortgage, if you have a car note, if you have credit cards, student loans, and all the things that many of us have, you want to make sure or at least try to apply for enough life insurance to not only pay your final expenses. Another goal you should have is to, if you have anyone that depends on your income, okay? Now, what I didn't say, I said anyone that depends on your income. I didn't say spouse. I didn't say children. I said someone that depends on your income. And that's a broad definition. Some of us take care of parents. Some of us take care of aunties. Some of us take care of nieces and nephews. A loved one is someone that depends, depends on your income. It doesn't matter. If you have someone that depends on your income, you also want to be in a conversation about life insurance to replace that income to make sure that loved one that you take care of while you're here, that they're still well taken care of if you're no longer here. Gotcha. Right? I could tell by I could tell by your reaction that I generated a thought. What did that make you think about? No, I I was actually looking at questions there, uh, but definitely it definitely makes sense where you can you anyone dependent. So send your income to pay your bills to continue the work. So that can really can extend out pretty far if we use that really broad definition of anyone depending on your income because society depends on your income. And yeah, very yeah, yeah, so we don't want to go all the way out into society. That's where we are today, where we're all independent. No, we want to, we really want to focus on our loved ones that carry on us, bringing a check home that when that check is not there, there's no food in the house, there's no shelter. So it's very much focused on our loved ones that, that make sense and and a real, real loved one within um, your definition of a family structure, because that's different for everyone, especially uh, especially these days. Okay. Right, so it's more so directly, like you. Right. Go ahead, I'm listening. No, so just more directly, people around you, like yeah. your maybe friends and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, I would say I would say friends, more more family. So I don't want to be too broad, but it's a very very specific, individual personalized conversation 
that each person should be in with a life insurance professional. Um, there's a number of things you can look at online, like we can Google anything else to get some ideas around cost. But more important, you want to ask someone that you know and trust a question to explain it to you. The worst thing to do is to buy something online or without getting to know someone and you don't get to ask that one question that makes all the difference in the world. Um, I believe every question you can ask is a good question because your situation is unique and different. It may be a situation I've never dealt with before. And one thing about me, um, I think I don't know is a great answer. If you don't know something, just say it very quickly, very comfortably. Clarence, it's a great question. I don't know. I'll look into it for you. I know someone else that's really good at it that can give us some help. Definitely, definitely. And, you, you know, when when that really happens, when it doesn't happen really, you definitely come back to me. Let me know, hey, this is what it is with that. So Absolutely. Um, I'd rather someone tell me that they don't know than make up an answer that sounds good. And then when it happens, oh, I thought I was covered. No, I thought you were, but not really. So, no, 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 no. You want to be sure. You want to be sure. These are uh, these are not inexpensive products. They're affordable. They're reasonable. We work with budgets. Um Oftentimes, I'm in a life insurance conversation before I go into a, a long speech about product and price and what you need. I'll ask someone a simple question. Based on your cash flow right now, how much could you comfortably set aside to pay for life insurance a month? And even if life shows up like it has now, that you'd still be able to maintain the policy. And that answer is different for everyone. And people will tell me, Kevin, right now I'm comfortable spending. $40 a month, $80 a month, $100 a month, whatever that is, they say, okay, the beauty of life insurance, I can build a program just for your budget. Car insurance, the price is the price based on the coverage. Home insurance, the price is the price based on the dwelling and other things we need to do. But life insurance, you can get as much or as little as you can afford. And that's one of the things I really like about it, that ability to work with people as an individual, as opposed to saying, you don't know, no, you're this age, you're this height, you're this weight, you're this medical condition. That's the price. I don't have any flexibility. Gotcha. So it's not like, I know I see a lot of advertisements online for some of these companies like that. Oh, we can save you money. They're all charging you too much money. It come with us and we'll save you $200. So I'm like, okay, well, so what aren't you giving me with the $200 I'm saving? Uh, so, so you answer some of those questions already. It's like, okay, I, I see what it is. It's just they can be shaving me down some things that I possibly could need. And when it comes down to it, you get into an accident and you find you don't have it, you know, you're in big trouble. Absolutely. But I'll give you a scenario. So let's say um, I purchased a home um, in Long Island, right? So half a million dollars, of course. Okay. So I want to cover my house just in case something happens to me, but I also need to make sure I have enough money in there because my, you know, my paycheck is gone now. I need to make sure my family has money to maintain the house, not just pay for the house. So what's Absolutely. that conversation like? Okay, well, you need X amount of dollars over the purchase amount for insurance. Absolutely. So Clarence, that's an income replacement conversation. Very directly, um, part of the fact finding is asking someone what they earn and how many more years do they plan on working and then that's a multiple of how many years we need to replace that, that income. Um, sometimes it centers around the mortgage, sometimes it centers around the children. So let's say you have someone that's making $50,000 a year and they're 50 years old and they're gonna work for another 10 years. So God blessing them with life, health and strength, they're going to bring in at least $50,000 a year for the next 10 years. That's a half a million dollars. Uh -huh. If they're not here, that household still needs that half a million dollars. The plan is not until, uh, you know, we say our Bible say until death do us part. Uh, but we don't mean, you know, good luck, you can move back with your parents. No, <laughs> we, want to, we want to play for keeps. We want to make sure that everything is good. So that's how that conversation goes. The beauty, Clarence, especially um, with life insurance, the sooner people start that conversation, the less expensive life insurance is. You know, a 30-year-old, a 20-year-old, they can buy massive amounts of life insurance for very little money on a monthly basis. The older we get, you know, judged by the amount of salt and pepper that we have, um, the more expensive life insurance becomes. But it's still 
affordable and doable depending on what you want to do and what what works with your with your budget very good okay and then uh actually i know you're running against a time um get the time clock here let's go so, 10 more minutes i see people are tuning in. let's go to 150. okay very good so uh, I know we talked about life insurance, but what other things can I do with life insurance while I'm alive? If I still have my life health insurance, like, you know, can I borrow against my life, life insurance? So let's say now um, I've had a policy with you for X, so say 10 years, right? Um, and we need money now. I'm waiting for my stimulus check. You know, I'm waiting for, uh, you know, to, to release, but I haven't gotten it just yet. So can I say, hey, Kevin, I need some cash to pay some bills. What can I do? Uh, so that's, a, that's a great question. Um, permanent life insurance policy, there's two types of life insurance. There's term life insurance, which is less expensive than permanent life insurance. And kind of what I've read was I was talking about young people being able to buy a lot of insurance for very little money. And then there's something called permanent life insurance. Some companies say whole life insurance, universal life insurance. That kind of insurance costs more on a monthly basis, but it has the added benefit and feature of building up cash value. So you can, if life shows up like it has and caught all of us by surprise, as we all are caught by surprise with COVID-19, there, there will be cash value in your policy if you've had it long enough so you can borrow against that policy. I have many customers that have had permanent life insurance policies for years, and they'll call me when life shows up. What do you mean life shows up? I've had people borrow money from a policy for a wedding. I've had them borrow money from a policy for a roof. Whatever comes up, it's your money, it's your savings, okay? It's not an ATM where you can start a policy today and, you know, in three months you can come back and swipe and get, you know, 40 bucks out. Um, whenever I'm illustrating this policy to someone, I'll show them where their cash value is going to be in 20 years. I'll show them where it's at in 10 years. But I'll say, keep in mind, this is money that you turn your back on. It's not your ATM. You don't use it often because there won't be much there. It takes time for the cash value to build. Gotcha. So theoretically, I could, so let's say I wanted to buy, I have a policy with you and I want to buy some properties now. Just say, you know what, I think properties in area X are going to be really hot right now. So Kevin, I need to get some down payment money. I'm going to need 25 grand to do this so I can buy this property. That's, I can definitely use it. If for the that money is there, that's your choice. Yeah, absolutely. If the money is there, that's your decision to invest. You know, time you buy the life insurance, you may not be thinking of an investment. This time where we've been um, quarantined for 40 days and 40 nights, maybe you have some thoughts about, you know what, I need to, this is a real conversation. People are looking for other streams of income. So people are like, yes, I look forward to going back to my job, but um, I think I want to get into real estate so I can generate some passive income and I need a place to get a down payment to get started. So that's a place to go. And what kind of interest rates am I looking at um, if I'm borrowing against my life insurance? Great question. Great question. There's two options when you borrow against your life insurance. You can pay it by an interest rate and it varies by product. So I won't be able to say a hard 5%, 7%, right. 5%, whatever that is, but do expect to pay interest. But there's also a concept called a partial withdrawal where you may not have to pay it back at all. So let's use your example where you need to borrow $25,000. Let's say that you had a $250,000 policy. And you say, Clarence, we, you took this policy out 20 years ago because you bought a house and you had some things that you wanted to have 250 to pay for. Well, fast forward 20 years later, you've paid off the mortgage. Um, the kids are out of school. Uh, that $25,000, Clarence, would you like to pay it back or you just want to withdraw it from the policy and reduce your life insurance down to $225,000? Okay? So that's a real conversation that I have with people all the time. And in that case, if you withdraw versus borrow, you don't have to pay it back. Very good. So we got a, a question from our, our live group. Uh, it asks, what are the benefits of term life insurance? Benefits of term life insurance, very, very affordable. You can buy a lot of life insurance for very little money. That's the benefit. Second benefit of term life insurance is it comes with the right to convert it to permanent insurance, regardless if your health takes a turn for the worst. So again, uh, what I said earlier is a young person can buy, an even older person can buy a lot of term insurance because that's the amount of insurance they need. Um, 
but they need this much insurance, but your budget is this much. So buy as much term insurance as you can. And then when your cash flow is a little bit better, you can convert parts of that uh, policy to a permanent policy so you can build up cash value. Uh, Clarence, a question that people ask me all the time, Kevin, which one is better? The one that you can afford and the one that you can keep. I have both term life insurance and I have permanent life insurance. I don't have a preference. I don't push one or the other. Every person is an individual. So depending on your cash flow at the time, um, I believe people should buy as much life insurance as they can comfortably afford at that time. Comfortably afford. Don't break your back. Don't break your budget. Don't spend an exorbitant amount of money on life insurance today if you're going to change your mind in six months. That doesn't benefit anybody. You want to be comfortable to say, you know what, based on what I'm doing here, I'll always be able to make this payment over time. Yeah. I've also used uh, term life insurance to help reduce my car insurance. So because you have a multiple policy that counts towards a multi, so I say, you know what, I'll get a term life for $50,000 just to have a second it's policy. It's bundling. It's great. Right. It's great. So why do I save so much bundling? I, I, I don't really get that. So I was like, okay, you're not any less risk. So why am I saving money bundling? Uh, because the more products you have with the company, the more likely you are to stay. And the longer you stay with the company, the more profitable it is to the company. So therefore the company returns that kindness to you. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Good deal. Um, I've also seen where some companies send you checks at the end of the year. Uh, so because I guess, I don't know what happened where they send you, okay, well, this is your portion back. I'm not sure what that is exactly. So those are that. those are mutual companies. Um, those mutual companies actually can share their profits with their customer base. So that's built into how they are set up. Okay. So do they cover me any differently than another comp a non mutual company would cover sure. me? Sure. Non mutual companies can't do that by law. Uh, publicly okay. held companies they can't do it. It's all about the corporate and tax structure and what you can do by law and what you can't do. So, for example, um, during this COVID-19 situation, Allstate was the first company to offer shelter-in-place refunds to their auto insurance customers because people are driving significantly less. But in order to do that, we had to file that request with New York State stating that this is what we want to do because we're not set up to normally give back a rebate. All right. Good deal. All right. So there's no rebates when it's not a mutual company. Uh, so what's something I should have asked you that I didn't ask you in this period? Uh, you asked me a number of questions. We talked about home insurance, auto insurance, life insurance. Uh, we opened a little bit. We touched upon wealth generation. We didn't talk about savings and investing. And the other thing that I help people with, uh, there may be people listening to this call that work at a job where they're fortunate enough to have a 401k, 403b, 457, deferred compensation. Um, they may need to tap into that now. Uh, one of the provisions of the CARES Act, the CARES Act is um, one of the things that's been put in place since COVID. There's a number of hardship examples where you can tap into that. There are tax consequences, so talk to a tax professional. But one of the other things that we assist people with is um, if they have fortunate enough to have a retirement plan, and they need help to know what to do when they retire. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they can make sure their money lasts forever. That's something that we help with as well. Oh, uh, something we spoke about the other night um, about COVID. I know there are some conversations going around about COVID. And what are some of the possible changes to life insurance um, that we may experience around COVID? Uh, it may encourage That's people to get it. Right it may encourage people to get more life insurance. That's the first and biggest change. Um, we've all been impacted by COVID. Uh, not your immediate family, certainly by friends, certainly by coworkers. Um, life insurance is a conversation that people always thought that they could postpone until a later date. Um, but I think it's gonna sincerely motivate people to get it. The thing we talked about last night is can people that um, either were infected by the coronavirus or um, live with someone that had it, can they still get life insurance? The answer is yes, they will be able to. There will be different changes by companies in terms of can they get it today? Do they have to wait two months? Do they have to wait six months? What is gonna be the waiting period for that? Even today, some life insurance companies have put restrictions on all policies or all 
non-medical policies because what's happening now is completely unpredictable. All insurance, property insurance, auto insurance, life insurance is all about predictability. The premiums that you charge is based on the prediction that we know how many accidents there will be. We know exactly how many home fires there will be. Normally in life insurance situations, we can predict uh, what mortality will be based on the health conditions that we know. Well, co the coronavirus, there's no history, it's brand new. So no companies know exactly what to do about it. What I would encourage people to do, um, whether they're affected, or whether you've been motivated to apply for life insurance because of it, give a life insurance professional a call. I'm here and available for you and find out what your options are. I'll be happy to help. Hey, Kevin, why don't you share your number uh, with the, uh, the live group so you can definitely contact you if they have any additional questions or something that they're not comfortable asking in the group, they can talk Absolutely. to you directly. Absolutely. So a couple of things. Um, if you're on Facebook, my business page is Abraham Kevin Spans and Sons, All State Agency, Abraham Kevin Span. My personal page is Kevin Span. If you're on Instagram, Kevin Span, the insurance guru, and Kevin Span Guru on Twitter. My number is 718-381-1400. Again, my office number is 718-381-1400. You want to shoot me an email, kevinspan at allstate.com. Kevin, K-E-V-I-N, span, S-P-A-N-N, at allstate.com. I'd love to talk to any of you. There's no bad questions. The only bad question is the question that you don't ask. All right, and I, I'll guess I'll give you one more wrap-up question. Uh, business continuity insurance, right? So I know a lot of us are small business owners like myself and yourself. Like, how can I use you? What product can I use to protect myself in this kind of period with the continuity insurance? Business continuity insurance, when you said it, I thought of two things. Uh, business continuity insurance is business continuity life insurance that comes into play if you and I were partners in business. Uh, mm -hmm. We'd want to have a buy-sell to make sure I got forbid if something happened to one of us. The other one would be able to buy the other one's spouse out. And we could stay in business so our spouse doesn't automatically become our business partner. The other business continuity insurance that I think you're referring to is what would allow me to pay my overhead, pay my staff during a time like this. The answer is nothing. Okay. Pandemics are not covered by insurance policies. Pandemics are specifically written out of all business insurance policies because it's completely unpredictable. Um, a pandemic is something that has devastated more businesses than anyone could have ever possibly properly priced a product for. Gotcha. So if it was a, a single event like we had 9-11, you would have covered into that because that was, or actually, would you be covered? Because that's a terrorist act, right? Uh, terrorism is written to a number of policies. There are some things that happened in 9-11 that are considered sudden and accidental. Uh, for example, the buildings exploded. So explosions are covered. Civil commotion is covered in property insurance policy. And in some business insurance policies, you have the right to sign up for terrorism coverage or to waive it to save a few dollars. So that will depend on the policy. But oftentimes terrorism coverage is offered. I lied. I said one more question. Um, so earthquake insurance. I know it's only happened like one time in New York, to my knowledge, in my years. Um, does our general policies cover earthquake insurance in this area? Uh, not in this area. There's an endorsement. I think out of uh, all my customers, I think I have one person that insists upon keeping that endorsement on their policy. Um, I just, uh, before the country shut down in March, I was in California, uh, the LA area where earthquakes are common. There, it's something that everyone would have. Here, it's um, something that most people don't have. I have one client out of all my customers who, um, you know, is unwilling to waive that coverage, even if it means saving money. They believe in it, they want to protect it, and they have it. It's an additional coverage you can add to your policy. So, what's the benefit of having the earthquake coverage here? So, if it comes, which we have had one. Um, yeah. Recently, we had a small one. I don't know the Richter scale. I don't have much experience yeah. dealing with it. But if it came and that was the cause of the damage, she would be covered and the other 99% would not be. All right. So, okay, so it's like uh, what I would compare it to is some people are comfortable flying and some people aren't. 
I don't take people out of their comfort zone. I don't want to close you on the idea of flying if you're definitely afraid. People have reasons for holding on to their beliefs, and whatever they are, I respect them. Gotcha. So um, we're going to end with the Tony Robbins question. What can I do in the next 30 minutes to implement some of these strategies you talked about today? Contact me and I will email you a form that says have the talk, okay? Um, as you and I both have been, we've been very active digitally trying to reach out to our customer base, our family base, our friend base, and encourage people to take action. Uh, my attitude is we should all come out of this better. I don't think we've been given this 40 day plus and 40 night experience, 40 days and 40 nights, more than that of being quarantined not to come out better financially. So one of the things I developed, I put on LinkedIn, I posted some articles about, is have the talk with your family. Let me come to you and say, hey Clarence, I just want you to know if anything happens to me, unfortunately I don't have any life insurance. Or, hey Clarence, if anything happens to me, um, you're my best friend, I want you to know I do have a life insurance policy. It is with Allstate. This is my personnel department. Give them a call so you can handle things for my family. Or, hey, Clarence, I have a policy with MetLife or Prudential. or Prudential. My parents took it out years ago. Clarence, I want you to have the policy so you know what to do. That's the talk that everyone needs to have with the people that's in your house right now so they know what to do. Um, Clarence, I can't share how many conversations I've been in in the last six to seven weeks. I can't share how many claims that checks that I've written and had delivered to families during this situation. But I can tell you that it's real and we need to have the talk. So the question is, email me, kevinspan at allstate.com and I'll send you the guideline for the conversation to have the talk with your family. It tells them what you do have in place, what you don't have in place, who to call if something were to happen, and it also makes sure your beneficiaries are up to date. Many people started a job 20 years ago and they may have named mom or dad as the beneficiary. And today they may not be as fortunate as they may not have a mom or dad in the land of the living. Those beneficiaries need to be updated. Those beneficiaries need to know what you have and you don't have so they know what to do. The emotional loss of a loved one is hard enough. I want to encourage people to have the talk to ease the financial side of that loss. Absolutely. And update those beneficiaries. So that situation where um, we had a family member have life insurance, but he forgot to update it. So his ex-wife got the policy and not his current wife. And I'm sure so. she didn't give it back. <laughs> no. So, uh, so that you don't want your spouse be in that position or anyone to be in that position where someone who was formerly in that position received it and you did not. So, <laughs> so definitely update those beneficiaries. Okay. So I just want to thank you for uh, spending some time with us today to help people, you know, understand what insurance is, what it covers, what it doesn't cover, because many of us are really clueless regarding that. And I hope that, Today's conversation at least started the ball and said, okay, well, I need to cover myself this way. This situation, I need some help in. So definitely reach out to Kevin. Um, I definitely, I work with Kevin on a regular basis. I trust him with my family, my clients, and that's my lifeline. So, and with any questions you have, they are more than willing to answer, um, you know, reasonably throughout the day and night that way. So definitely re reach out to Kevin. I'm sorry, I'm getting attacked by my printer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, and it's, you know, reach out to them. Uh, and there are also, we're going live a little later tonight, about nine o'clock. We're talking about refinancing and different types of credit options you have for, um, you know, for your home and property. So you definitely reach out, come back to us about nine o'clock this evening. And we're going to have a talk about that here with Vaughn Hunter. So um, if no one has any more questions, uh, thank you for your time and uh, be blessed. And I'll see you at nine o'clock and Kevin, I'll talk to you later. Have a good one. Thanks, I appreciate it.